And we're back with the quick tutorial on Factorio. This is just about how to start off in the game if you're completely new and what to expect because this game is a little bit intimidating if you've never played it before, especially if you've seen some of the trailers. Now, if you're just going to start, my recommendation is just do a quick default start. You will probably abandon your first 10 maps before you get anywhere near to the end, but that's fine. It's kind of all part of the process. Now, this is just a default map, but you do have this preview button down here. Very important. It allows you to view this map settings here. And if you just click this button up in the top left, you can keep spinning away and you see these tiles up here, that's desert. You don't want desert in your base, but right now, smack bang here in the middle where we're going to spawn, there's lots of surrounding trees. That's good because it helps absorb pollution, which means we're less likely to die early on. More on that in a minute. So, let's start this sucker up. Yeah, there's a cutscene, there's a ship crashed, it's time to craft stuff and get out of here. You go and grab all the stuff out of the ship, in fact, grab everything out of all of these pieces. There's a, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that burns. I learned that every time. You just uh, go along and hold down control and you can just grab stuff out of these and it gives you a little bit of starting resources. These starting resources are what you're going to use to expand. Uh, let me get rid of the ship. The first thing you're going to want to do is get your hands on some fuel. And there's a couple of ways to do that. One, you can go chop down some trees. And this is, well, pretty slow and boring and all that, but once you've got your hands on a little bit of fuel from, say, trees, you can go over here to your iron patch, press the E key to bring up your inventory, and you can plop down a stone furnace, which is what we're going to stick right there, and you're also going to put down mining drill. Now, you see that arrow sticking out of it? If you That tells you where it's going to spit out its, uh, what's, what it's mining, and in this case, iron ore. And then we want to stick our fuel in here. Well, I'll say half of it, and then stick the other fuel in here. And what that does is this now mines iron ore, that iron ore gets chucked into the stone furnace, the stone furnace turns this into iron plate. We can't make iron plate any other way. Now, we can use this iron plate to make stuff. You make stuff the same way you place stuff. You just bring up E for the inventory and you've got these four sections up here where you can craft things. All you're really going to be crafting at the start is burning miner drills and stone furnaces. The two of those allow you to basically mine more materials. Of course, we're quickly going to run out of fuel. That wood's not going to last very long. Now, you have two options for fuel. One of them is coal and one of them is wood. Wood is annoying because you have to go manually chop it yourself and you can't automate this process. You just literally have to go around and keep doing that. So normally what people do is they get enough iron plates in place that they do two burning miner drills. However, you'll notice there when you put your hover your cursor over it there, it says we need a stone furnace to make the burner mining drills, as in, you know, they're combined together. And you'll see the missing red ingredient there is stone. So we need to get our hands on some stone. Two ways to do that as well. Uh, there's a stone patch here you can see up in the mini-map. See that grey up there? That is stone. Another option is you can find these boulders around the place. And these are actually much, much better for getting stone quickly. Let me point out, if you go up to a boulder like this, you can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight seconds and you can get, well, eight to nine seconds, you can get about 25 stone. However, if you go over to the stone patch, you can now mine like this. That's one stone. Two stone. Yeah, it's incredibly slow. Don't bother. Instead, immediately grab up whatever rocks you can find in the surrounding area. Some of these rocks can occasionally contain coal as well, which is a fuel, which would be great for you. If all this so far seems very boring and monotonous, well, yes. Well, not quite. It's teaching you the basics. So what you want to do is just craft these burner mining drills. So we crank down two of these, and soon we're going to be automating a lot of this stuff so we don't have to do nearly as much running around and mining on our own. Now, we could mine this coal by hand. It's incredibly slow, but instead we're going to take these two burning miner drills, we'll put one down like that, see the yellow arrow is facing that direction, then we'll rotate the other one so that it's facing into it, and the two of them basically just keep chucking coal back and forth. They burn coal, and they burn coal to run, and they actually produce coal, so with the two of them providing fuel for each other, to do that we just open it up, and we are going to stick in one, actually, you know what, you can have one coal, and that now has dumped coal into the other one which is now going to spit coal back into that one. And it just goes back and forth with them generating coal. The great thing is these can hold about 50 coal in here, which means we basically can come back every so often and go, yep, yeah, give us all that excess coal. You don't need it. You have plenty of coal inside you. Now, uh, another option you'll see touted, or this is what you would do sort of by default if you would never played before, is you'll sort of get one of these and you'll rotate it around and you'll just dump it into a wooden box, say like this. And now, as it produces coal, that coal gets dumped into the wooden box, and that wooden box slowly starts to fill up with coal. However, that's... Yeah, eventually this will run out of coal, or this will run out of coal. So that's why normally people use this sort of a daisy-chained coal miner design. Now that we have all this coal, we've got a whole bunch of fuel we can use. So let's go over here and maybe expand our iron production. And this is sort of where the gameplay loop kicks in. You expand your iron production to expand your coal production to expand your iron production. And uh, also, you're going to want to get stone as well. There we go. Steel production doubled, or iron production doubled, whatever you want to call it. However, that's not enough. We're going to need to set up uh, more stone as well. And this is sort of the 
this is more the gameplay loop. You're just going to be going around constantly improving production until eventually it becomes, well, we'll show. Over here, we just dumped 50 coal into this burner miner. It's going to start spitting out stone into here and it will provide us with an awful lot of stone. The only thing you need stone for early on is the stone furnaces. So this is just going to be a small little production facility that churns away in the background, producing a stone that we're going to need to make more burner miner drills. More coal so that we never run out. More iron plates so we can produce more drills. Of course, you can't do this forever. There's going to be problems. The problem is going to be pollution. If the pollution overlay is not on on your map view, you can click this button up here to turn it on. This red cloud is how far the pollution from your machines has traveled. Each mach machine has a pollution rating. You bring it up by uh, going into the crafting menu and you can just hover over here something like the stone furnace. Pollution, two pollution per minute. Mining drills are 12 pollution per minute. Uh, electric mining drills are 10 pollution per minute. Boilers, all this stuff, it all has a pollution rating. And as it pollutes, it's absorbed by the natural environment. So this grass, everything like that, it all has a, a pollution absorption effect. So in theory, if you kept all of these running flat out all the time, eventually the natural environment would hit an equilibrium where it's absorbing the pollution as fast as it's being created, and the cloud would sort of settle in a, nor a natural size. However, as you keep expanding your factory, which you will probably never stop doing, the pollution cloud will keep getting bigger and bigger. And as it does, it's going to annoy the local biters. These uh, red blobs over here are angry aliens, and when they sniff pollution, they come and kill you. Before we get into science, we might want to check out some things that you'll probably do when you're newer at the game. And I'll just cover why they're not really that efficient. One thing you can start doing is you can start producing transport belt right now. This allows you to automate an awful lot of stuff. And you can also produce burner inserters, which allow you to do some fun things as well. So I'm just going to show you some of the things you'll probably end up doing if you're newish. This is where creativity starts to come into the game, because you can do some all sorts of funny stuff with this. Here we have these miners, and they're picking up their coal and they're dumping it onto this transport belt that we made. We handcrafted all of this in our pockets, because that's the kind of person we are. And then all of this coal gets dumped on here and goes around the back here. Now, of course, the only thing keeping those coal miners going is these coal miners at the back dumping coal into them, which is, you know, a problem. That's a point of failure. They can run out. So what we can do is we can craft these burner inserters. Now, inserters will do things like pick up things from one spot and move them to another. In this instance, we're picking them up off the belt and we're moving them into the burner miners behind them. So by just putting these here, we can ensure that these burner miners keep getting provided with coal, which means we can take care of all that excess coal that was in them. And you see there, those little handy drills or... Uh, inserters, they're picking up the coal, chucking it into these coal miners, those coal miners are then fueling these coal miners. I mean, honestly, we could get rid of the middleman here, we could just uh, have the these directly in fuel, but no, 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 this is Factorio, you're allowed to do it whatever messed up way you want. As long as it works, it doesn't matter. Now, this transport belt comes all the way along here, and we're going to send it over here to help automate this whole process, so we don't have to keep carrying coal back and forth like some sort of slob. Now, as I said before, there's no dumb way to play Factorio, but this is definitely not efficient, but it's just something you'll probably end up doing on your first playthrough. What you're doing here is you're just chucking coal off of this line, dumping it into the burner drill. That provides iron. That iron gets chucked into the furnace. And this burner inserter here is dumping coal into that. So now you have automated the delivery of coal. You don't have to run coal back and forth anymore like some sort of slob. You can just have these things do it for you. And this is sort of the core of the game. However, once you've played the game for a bit, you realize doing this early on is just a waste of time and resources. This is just an awful lot of time investment, manually crafting a whole bunch of stuff to do what's effectively something you can do far simpler if you just jump straight to electricity. So let's uh, rewind time. So how do we automate these things smarter and faster with less effort? Well, water. Uh, water allows you to get power and science, and power and science are pretty much the lifeblood of this game. Uh, you're going to want to go in here, you're going to want to craft yourself a boiler, uh, you're going to want to craft yourself an offshore pump, a oh, couple of steam engines as well. Oh, and we're also going to need some power poles, so we'll queue those up. First, offshore pump. It's pretty easy, just pick one place there, then we want to stick on the boilers. Oh, damn it, I queued up another boiler. Never mind, you, you want to queue up your boiler and it's got three inputs, well, two inputs, one output. What we want is that steam output and we want to output that into a steam engine. Now, you can look up the ratio of these online. In fact, this is the Factorio cheat sheet. I'll link, link it in the description below. This gives you all of the ratios that you need. Uh, unfortunately, there's an awful lot. This game has a lot of ratios going on, but the only one we care about right now is the steam power. You need, for one offshore pump, it can support 20 boilers, and 20 boilers can support 40 steam engines. Or, to put it more succinctly, we don't need a lot of power right now, so all we need to know is one boiler can support two steam turbines attached to it, or two steam engines. Then all we do is we dump some coal in there, and it powers up, and this gives steam to these devices. You can check all the stats on these, you can see in the middle right there, you can see it consuming steam, and the steam pressure, and all this stuff. 
But next up, we need copper. The reason we need copper is we need it for doing electrical. I threw down, it's basically the exact same as iron mining, except I just threw it down over there on top of the orangey copper patch and grabbed some copper plates. Now we're going to distribute out the power and get into science. To do that, you build a science lab and you're also going to build a bunch of these power poles. Both of these require copper. The reason for the power poles is they distribute the energy from its locations. So you'll notice once we put that power pole down, this whole thing actually stops flashing badly. The reason being it, it actually can now distribute power to something. So long as we place something in the power radius of that blue square, boom, now that's powered and research automatically pops up. The first thing you're going to want to research, unless you're about to get mauled by biters, is automation. This allows you to get access to automated machines that, well, do stuff for you. Click the start research button on that and off you go. Now you can't queue researchers unless you've modified the map at the start. My advice, don't queue researchers at first. You, if you're newer to the game, you're probably gonna go, go in and have a look at everything. For example, the next thing we really want is logistics. That gives us access to a bunch of transport belt uh, niceness. But to get this working, we need science packs and red science packs. You can see here on the research screen that it looks for these little red science potions. That's basically a way of making you spend money. They want you to spend resources to get these and you can manually craft them, but we won't be doing that for long. We're going to need at least 10 of these, so we need more iron plate. Once we craft the 10 potions, what we can do is chuck them into the science lab. And if you check over here, you'll see this is going to start putting that bar up. It, you can check here how much each one is going to cost. So once those 10 science potions have been consumed by the lab, if you want, you can double down actually and make a second lab. Once they've been consumed, we'll knock out that research. With that early research knocked out, we actually have far more options than we had before. So what we're going to do is just show you one of the ways that you can do it and then another way that you can do it because there's so many options from here on in. It's one of the joys of Factorio. Op optimization can come later. What you're really looking forward to is just getting things done. The research we unlocked gives us access to these assemblers. And assemblers are basically miniature uses. They can craft stuff themselves. Now, they're not as fast as us, but they don't require us to sit there and have our queue taken up with it, and we can automate the delivery of materials to them. As opposed to us, which is mobile, these things can sit there and we can just set things up. So just say we want to craft some science there. We'll go science for you and science for you. However, they need materials dumped into them. So they want copper plate and gear wheels. So we've got to give them both those materials. And the first thing we're going to set up is we're going to give them gear wheels. So we'll say put that sucker there and we'll set this to produce gear wheels. Now what happens is we can take the gear wheels from here and dump them into the science packs. We throw down a couple of electric poles to make sure these are all in range and we use some electric inserters. Electric inserters are, inserters are way better than burner ones because we can use them wherever we have electricity and because we've got this down we can have electricity anywhere we want with these uh, little electricity poles. Now I'm just going to show you the dumbest way of doing this. We can just throw a bunch of iron plate in there and then that gets dumped into these assemblers and then we can throw our copper plate in there and boom. Now we've got those producing science at which point we can then dump them across into our laboratories. And now we've automated the production of science potions. Well, not quite. I mean, this is this is probably the dumbest, simplest setup you can possibly do. So let's maybe smarten this up a bit so we don't have to do as much labor. Here is a slightly less difficult way of doing this. And honestly, there is, there's more than a hundred ways of doing these things. But what happens here is we have iron plate, we dump into a wooden chest, and it feeds into our cog machine. Our cogs get dumped into this wooden chest, and then we dump in some copper plates in here as well. And we'll just come back every so often and dump copper plates and iron plates in here. And the machines just process them, and they dump them into the necessary science labs. Now, this is a very crude, brutal setup, and it's not what I would normally use, but you will end up doing things like this when you first start playing. And you know what? Just kind of revel in it. It's a lot of fun. Now, let's just show you a, a one last quick scenario. This is sort of the same base as the last one. It's about the same progress level, but don't panic. It, it seems, I know, like there's an awful lot going on here, but really, it's very, very simple. Uh, instead of using burner miner drills, we've switched over to electric ones. They basically work twice as fast, but you just have to provide them with power. And if we check on the map view here, you can even display the power grid. That's where our power supply is over there on the right hand side. And then we just have one line of power. It doesn't matter how much power you run. You could run a hundred million gigawatts across that line. It doesn't care. So the game doesn't really care about that so much. Electricity is very much, if a wire is connected, it works. So this allows us to power, get send power to all of these mining drills. And these mining drills, well, you can actually see the leftover vestigial traces of our previous setup but that sends all of the iron and copper ore over here and then it's combined with a bit of coal and there's just these basic smelting setups now i don't want to get into too much details on these the reason being it's sort of fun to discover it for yourself and it's pretty self-explanatory you pull in coal and iron from one side and outside at the other side it spits out iron plate the little things you're going to do along the way though is here's some automated transport belt crafting just to speed up the, the instead of having to craft it manually on yourself, you 
start crafting it this way. And not only that, you'll see here when it comes to making these uh, red sides, yep, you can see there's these cogs on the belt. These things consume cogs and the game is encouraging you to learn how to automate the production of cogs. Even more importantly though, when you go into the next science pack, green, green science packs require you feed them transport belts and inserters. In other words, you consume transport belts and inserters to make those science packs. What the game is trying to encourage you to do here is automate things. They don't want you pocket crafting everything. They want you to, you know, start making things automatically. The whole thing is about automation. I think they wanted to call this game automation, but you know, that game's name was already taken a long time ago. So they went with Factorio. Your job is to create a big factory and that big factory's job is to create all of the components you need to expand the factory. So the needs of the factory are expanding to meet the needs of the expanding factory. But of course, there's always things that are going to stop you, namely the enemy biters. Now I've cleared a, a nice big space around here, but you'll see that pollution cloud, it's expanding and you're going to have to deal with those biters. Now to deal with the biters, you're going to want to produce, well, weapons, gun turrets, defenses. There's several different methods. Now, depending on what way you've started, if you started on normal, the biters will keep expanding and they'll keep trying to encroach into your territory. And if they set up a base inside your pollution cloud or your pollution cloud expands out to meet their base, they will sniff the pollution and go, okay, we got to kill this guy. And they'll set a, a group of them will get together and come attack your base. At which point you're going to need to start together putting gun turrets. Gun turrets you have to fill with ammunition. Ammunition costs resources to craft. Those resources you use to craft them cause pollution, which means you're generating pollution to stop the biters, which are attacking you because of your pollution. You see the problem there. <laughs> you're now creating more pollution to stop them, but that's just going to increase the problems as more and more of them attack you. As well as that, the more pollution you release, uh, they don't have to smell it, but every single gram of pollution you release into the atmosphere, it causes them to evolve and get tougher and more of them. So, and it's not even if, if the pollution gets as far as them or if it's absorbed or not, it's just as it's produced by your machines. As you travel further and further away from your home base, the swarms of biters and the bases they produce get bigger, meaner and nastier. So if we head down here, you can see one of the litter bases and you know, that's a lot of biters. That's a whole lot of them. You do not want to be going near this without some serious weaponry because they will kill you. Now, death is not the end of the game, you just respawn back at your base. So it's no, it's not exactly the end of the world. In this base, to deal with the biters, we started producing armor-piercing ammunition. Now, there's a whole production chain that goes into making it. For one thing, you need iron plate to produce basic ammunition. So it takes four iron plates and you get one magazine of basic ammunition. I don't know where the gunpowder comes from, it's magic, okay? Then comes the armor-piercing rounds. To make those, you just need one regular magazine, and then you need one steel plate and five copper plates. Combine all three of those together and magically you end up with more armor-piercing ammunition. However, you can check up here and you can check the recipe, you'll see that that takes three seconds to craft. Whereas say something like this only takes one second to craft. This is why you see these, uh, these ratios that will be touted all the time. So one of these can produce three magazines in the time it takes these to produce one. So you usually group one of these with three of these. Uh, for the same reason down here, we have five red science and we have six green science because it takes five seconds for one of these to produce a science pack and it takes six seconds for one of these to produce a science pack. So if you combine that, that means five of them and six of them will produce the science at the exact same rate. And that's sort of the core of the game. Figure out what the ratios are and sort of have fun with it. You don't have to be too crazy. You just have to make sure you stay ahead of the biters. They're always going to be coming for you and you need to keep researching and keep improving. The more pollution you spit out, and you're going to keep doing it, the tougher they're going to get. So you keep having to go through the tech tree and keep getting stronger and better. Until you hit sort of laser turrets, but mm, that's that's a lot further into the game. Now I know I didn't go into the details and the nitty gritty of how every single machine works and what you should do with the for ratios, but this is more a general guide to what you're trying to achieve. And the end goal is really to get to the end of the tech tree and launch a rocket to get off the planet. Though. In my opinion, that's really just the start of mid-game. Once, once you launch your first rocket, you're kinda, you've are kind of you knocked at all the basics and you've learned how the game works. At that point, you can start having some real fun. But if you want to use a, a very nice, or, neat, organized base using pre-designs that you found on the internet, go ahead. Or if you want to make your own spaghetti, go, no one minds. That's the joy of Factorio. Play it your way. Anyway, I uh, put this together because, yeah, I started this series and I realized I kind of dove in a little bit too fast. So I just sort of put this together for people who are new and haven't played Factorio before. Just a general quick guide to how the game works. I hope you enjoyed and uh, good luck. Thank you.